Oh, let's go to Michael. First time call out of Indiana. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you for calling. Uh, hey, Jesse, what's up? All is well, Michael. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great. I'm excited yeah. to call into the show. Right on. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to kind of ask you something about the biblical question. I didn't really get, Was it? Is that like a metaphor? The biblical question. You are the light of the world. Jesus said you are the light of the world and salt of the earth. What does that mean? Uh, I actually don't know. Are you a Christian? I'm trying to be. I'm like, I'm, I'm just a kid, uh, like a teen. Oh, how old are you? Uh, I'm almost 13. Oh, you're almost 13. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you don't have to worry about it right now. <laughs> I'm trying to learn about that. So. No, don't learn about it, Michael. Seek first the kingdom of God, and he will reveal it to you. Uh, are you raised by your father and mother? Uh, Yeah, they're divorced, though. So you're not being raised by both parents? Partially, I guess. Partially. What do you mean, partially? Like, I, I, I'm technically m m more raised by my mom. I guess, yeah. Amazing. And how is that going for you? It's going all right. What's the problem with it? Well, it'd be obviously it'd be better if they were both equally part of, you know, raising, if they were equally there. Yeah. Or You're... even if I, you know, obviously was there more with my, my dad, but he's got his own issues sometimes as well. And uh, are you white? Uh, Yeah. And so have you told your father that you need to be with him at this point and that he has issues, too, that he need to work out, but you really need your father at this point? Have you told him that? Um, no, I've not. Why not? I don't know, actually. That's a good question. Have you told, your, have you told your mother that you no longer need her, you need your father? You need to be with him. No, I'm not. Why not? Well, they're, they're both. There's both. Um, I don't know. It's kind of tough because they're both like on different sides of things. They they both, you know, disagree with me. And that's one thing that I would actually like to, you know, ask you about because both of them seem to get um, a little bit concerned with me, you know, having the sort of opinions that I have because I'm very political. Like I'm very. I have a lot of strong political opinions. I've been following you for a while, and they seem, especially my mom, uh, seem to be concerned that I have these sort of opinions on like racism and stuff like that. What are your opinions on so uh, driving a wedge? What are your is doing what? It's it's kind of driving a wedge but, in between us in a way. And what are your political opinions? Opinions. Opinions. Uh, the same ones as you. Like I I believe. I don't believe in white privilege. I think that's just a way of, of controlling people, yeah. especially white people. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think that we should constantly pile on these things like racism and sexism and stuff. It's just a way of controlling individual groups to make them go along with you. 100%. You need to call it what it is, yeah. which is good and evil. Yeah. You're absolutely right. You're 15. And, and for some reason, what were you saying? And you're 15 years old, right? Well. Uh. No, I'm I'm 13. You're 13. You're at 12. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And so you say for some reason what? Um, I actually forget what I said and, there. And, um, and but, you said uh, that for though. For some reason they're for some reason they're concerned that I have these opinions because they think I don't have a good like a good perspective on the world and everything. Your father and mother and feel this way. Both of them, yeah. And so what opinions do they want you to have? They want me to acknowledge uh, racism and everything. And I've told them, I don't want to acknowledge something that doesn't exist. <laughs> That's right. And did they say why they wanted you to acknowledge it? Because they think that by me um, ignoring it or not thinking that it exists, I'm like part, I guess I'm. they think I'm part of the, the problem or that I, you know, I'm ignorant about things and that that could hurt people and everything. 
and uh, I just disagree. I think that it's I think it's hurting people by making them believe in these terms like you know racism. It it actually holds them down to to make them believe these things, and it's actually beneficial to say, look, you're not suffering due to like you know racism or whatever. You're suffering because of either your failures or your the failure of your parents. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah, and they think that that's bad. And so they want you to shut up about it or what? <laughs> they don't want me to shut up about it. I think they want me to just, you know, they want me to have the same um, interest in these in these issues, but I think they just want me to be more, what, liberal? Oh. Is your father— They're not liberals. They're not liberals? But, well, they say they say they're not liberals. I'm starting to question that a little bit. What do they? Issues. What do they say they are? Uh, conservatives. <laughs> oh God! And so, um, do they think you're white supremacist for feeling this way? Supremacist for feeling this way? <laughs> they they think that I'm super like far right, which I guess yeah maybe. So what, being 13 years old, what do you do about this? What do, how do you deal with all this? So you're dealing with your parents know, not being like together. You're not, you're dealing with your parents not being together. So you need your father. You're trying to be, be a man, do it the right way. And they're against, according to you, they're against that. How do a 13 year old handle that? I don't know. It's kind of tricky. Do you smoke pot? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh man, and, and so you I'm have a qu- to avoid that. Yeah, don't get into that, man. You want a clear conscience. <laughs> Do not get into drinking and smoking and messing with your conscience. And don't let anyone tell you that smoking pot is healthy. That God made pot. All right, don't fall for it. My my brothers do that. They're potheads. They smoke pot. Two brothers. Yeah, they're like they're twenty. Three and twenty-five, I think. Amazing. Uh, so, have they believed into what your parents want them to believe about racism and all that? Yeah, they've been brainwashed. <laughs> they believe in in police brutality and everything, and they're oh. like, "Oh, if you're black, then you you inherently struggle in America." I literally had one of them tell me that, like, it's uh, it's been like inherently worse for for blacks. And they they said that they're every single time. That, that I ask them, how can you prove that racism is a thing? They always give me stupid anecdotes. Like, oh, there was one black guy that got shot when he was laying down with his <laughs> hands up. And it's like, okay, a oh, one time that that happened? <laughs> and then they don't know the whole story of that situation. Yeah, never. They never know the whole thing. And when I tell them that, they go, Oh, well, maybe that's not the case, but racism is still a huge problem. And it's like, well, the example that you just gave me wasn't true. <laughs> so how do you know that? Man, you're smart for 13. You're smart. You have I'm your... I'm telling you. <laughs> and so you have a question for me? Um, well, that was, I kind of, yeah, that was my, my whole, well, I guess well, that was a statement. But my question is how... Should I, how do I um, try to fix this, this issue, this, like, because it's kind of, it's kind of dividing me from my, my parents. Uh, how do I fix that? And, or should I, should I try to do something about that? Or are they just going to continue to believe what they believe? And how is it dividing you from them? Because my, my mom, my, my, my mom. Uh, not my dad. My dad seems to just disagree with me, but my mom actually is getting concerned that I believe these things. And I think that's, that's causing sort of, you know, a conflict there because, um, she, she gets mad during these, these conversations because she thinks that I'm going towards, uh, like, like evil or even just ignorance. Um, and so she's getting concerned. So when you say she's concerned, she's getting angry and all that at you? Yeah, she gets mad at me. Oh. Angry. And how do you feel about that? I don't like it. It wasn't that way two years ago. I just started developing my political opinions in the last 
two years, and even just last year it wasn't that way. But now that I've started to learn the truth about these things, and I started to, you know, I started following you like maybe six or seven months ago. Yeah. Um, and I learned the truth about these things, and now I feel happier, and I feel more, uh, you know, I feel like I, I know a lot more, and I feel a lot more you know, comfortable with my political beliefs and everything. And now that that's happening, and I've gone to this side, gone far, quote unquote, far right. Um, yeah, it's created a sort of anger in my my mom, and I don't know why. And is your mother a Christian? Yeah. Oh, is your father a Christian too? He's trying to be. <laughs> what is he doing to try to be? What do you mean he's trying? He's he's getting involved more in um. Because he, he had a lot of, he had a lot of demons that he was that he was facing. He had, he had a lot of uh, a lot of issues with. Um, so well, he was he's very he was very neglectful. And I know you ask a lot of callers uh, if if their you know fathers were actually doing anything to them, and I think he did. He actually was neglectful, and now he's learning how to how to deal with that. He he's learning how to actually face you know, certain obstacles instead of just avoiding them. So you're saying he's, he's learned... Also trying to become closer to God. Are you saying he's learned how to deal with your mother now to keep you to keep <laughs> her from destroying you guys? Uh, well, no, he's, um, he's like, he's owned up to some of the mistakes he's made. And I think they've both made some mistakes, but he definitely, he was definitely the cause of a lot of, a lot of issues, um, between me, obviously between me and him, not, you know, that's the one that I'm focusing on is the issues between, you know, me and him. He was definitely the cause of, of those things. I don't think it had anything to do with my mom. What type of issues did he, what did he do to you? Um, he would, like, he wouldn't, um, it's tough to put into, like, words exactly, but I would say something to him, and I would say, this is, like, you know, this is things that you're that you're doing wrong. Like these are this is how I feel about certain situations, and this is how I feel like we could, uh, you know, deal with them. Um, and he would just completely ignore. He would completely ignore what I was saying, and he would he would assume that um, everything that he said was correct, and he wouldn't actually try to listen. He would just say that, oh, this is the way things are. That this is the way I feel about a situation so you need to to feel that way and how do you never listen to me how do you know he was wrong when he was telling you he was telling you the right thing to do how do you know he was wrong what like with his opinions or with like rules or with what right whatever it is you thought he was wrong on but he would say no i'm right on this how do you as a kid how do you know he was wrong Uh, I don't actually know. That seems like you're drilling me on these things. Crap. This is what happens to everybody. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> I really don't with some of them. You know, I'd have to think of some examples to work on that. But would you talk to your mother? Would you talk to your? The way I feel. Would you talk to your mother about it? She told you your father was wrong. Crap. <laughs> yeah. So what? Yeah. And so once your mother told you your father was wrong, you believed her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big mistake. She said that he did the same thing to her. And he's even admitted that he's done some of these things. Big mistake, uh, Michael. Your mother, you turned to what? Your mother identified with her. And that's why you didn't want to follow the instructions of your father. Because women try to okay. control everything. And because men are married to the mothers, they don't know how to handle it. But women think they know everything is right, and whatever the man does, them it's wrong. And if he doesn't do it her way, then she would turn you away from him. Make you think your father's wrong. Yeah, it's it is possible that that's the case. I do have a, a question though: is um, do you do you think that it's possible both of them could be that way, both parents? Yeah, well, both of them are wrong in that they're in a fallen state. The men are married to their mothers, and the mothers are married to weak fathers, their fathers, 
like their father weak, so they married the same kind of man, and the warfare is happening. But the children should get their instruction from the father, not from the mother, and the mother should make sure that the father's instructions are carried out, not go against them, thinking that she's right and he's wrong and telling the children that. That should not be happening. Yeah, it's also been a little bit different um, with dealing with certain things as I've been, as I've been growing up because I have uh, autism as well. You have it's autism? Bit, well, not autism, but I have Asperger's, which I guess is autism in a way. What is Asperger? It's uh, it's it's like high functioning autism. It's where you can. It's not as severe, so you can be, you know, like social and stuff. It's a lot easier to to deal with. It still comes with some struggles, but that's where my parents had to actually work together, and that's where a lot of this, a lot of a lot of the stuff, a lot of the beneficial things that have happened have have come from is having to try and deal with some of the issues I have growing up. All right, and and who told you that you had Asperger? Uh, the whoever it was that diagnosed me. And who diagnosed you? At school or at some doctor or what? It was a, it was a doctor. And so, who took you to this doctor so the doctor can tell you, you had Asperger? Uh, both parents. And what made them take you? What were you doing that caused them to take you? Um, it was I, it was things in school that I would do, like certain, um, I didn't understand certain things in school. Um, and so they they thought, they tried to see what was going on because I, I clearly was, was different. I was, I was um, receiving information differently because I, would, I wouldn't understand what the teachers were saying. Um, and so they looked into it and they thought maybe I actually had Asperger's and, or autism because they saw that that actually lined up with a lot of the things that was going on, and then it turned out I did. did and so they're saying you did because the, the professionals say you did, right? Yeah. Is it possible the teachers were dumb? <laughs> <laughs> Is it possible what? That the teacher was dumb. Yeah, I, I, as a matter of fact, they were because they didn't understand, they didn't want to change what they they didn't want to change what they were doing in certain ways. They were blatantly um, they, they were what they would do is they would they were stuck in certain things that they were doing, um, and they didn't care about really anything except for oh this is the way that it's go, that it's worked for every single person, and now one one kid isn't understanding what I'm saying, so I'm just gonna have to you know keep telling them over and over and yell at them until they actually listen. Amazing. Are you on medication now? No, I'm not. Thank God. And why didn't they put you on medication? Not that I uh, recommend it. I'm just asking why didn't they do it? What made them not do it? Because uh, I could learn things on my own. And they also, my parents realized that uh, it probably wouldn't be best to pump me full of, of medicine. Oh, good. And so... Yeah. I have, I have a, I know someone and they have a, a couple of kids. Some, some seem to be into the academic stuff really better than others. And uh, the teacher said that, oh, this one kid of yours cannot learn and that this kid has uh, Asperger or some kind of something dumb they came up with. And they wanted to put the kid on medication and the mother said yes to it. She was ready to do it. But the father said, no, we're not going to do it. We'll help her with her homework. We'll do what we need to do to help our child. But we're not putting her on medication. And we're not yeah. accepting that diagnosis that you gave. And now this girl is in med school becoming a doctor. Because the parents got involved and they showed her love and they worked with her with her. And now she's becoming a doctor, and she never ended up on medication and all that craziness that the school say is wrong with you, or the doctors say. Yeah. So, your question to, for me is what, uh, Michael? Well, I think you kind of answered it, uh, but my question was originally how do I deal with this divide between me and my parents because of my opinions, aka, you know, the truth about racism. Uh, um, 
or should I, you know, deal with it? Like, should I even, should I try to, like, what, convince them to what I think, or should I, obviously I shouldn't go along with what they believe because it's not true. Right. Uh, do you but, tell like, them that I'm black? That I said slavery never, there's no such thing as racism and sexism. Did you tell yeah, them? Yeah, they know. And, and what do they say when you say a black man said it? When you say a, a black man said it, um, they don't really care. They're just like, oh, well, that doesn't that doesn't matter. It's just not true because, you know, we think what we believe in. And then <laughs> it doesn't matter what color the person is that's saying it. Amazing. So here's what I recommend for you, buddy. Number one, do not get angry at them. Don't let them get you angry and frustrated because once you become angry, you're going to lose. Yeah, they will. They will be able to brainwash you once you become angry and, and you start to believe that wrong is right and right is wrong. Once you become angry, that's how they control you. When I say they, I mean the children of the lie. They either make you angry or they make you feel good. Either way, they have control over you. So don't let, yeah. them, make, don't let them make you angry and don't let them make you feel good. Don't let them yeah, build your... I also your... wanted to say uh, one thing because I saw uh, something in the... Whatever it was, the, like, you know, the chat on the side of the live stream. I saw someone say something about stay out of uh, public school. I'm actually going into public school next next year why because <laughs> my it's it's complicated but basically because of the uh the original divorce and then because of uh my mom got re remarried and then was in oh, a really God. terrible relationship with this guy this drug this guy was a drug addict he was really he was really bad he was a drug addict wow um and he he, manip he manipulated her obviously to think that and I saw this happen he did this to me as well he manipulated both of us into thinking he was a great guy and his lies and everything were exposed over the course of two years and then because of that because of that uh that really terrible relationship and then divorce uh last year um now my mom has to work full time and I can't stay home obviously because it's like I I'm not I don't have a life basically I just at home, I can't go anywhere. I don't have any friends, and so it, they thought that it would be it would be better for me to actually go somewhere where I can have friends than to just be stuck at home while my mom works and while my dad works all day. Did your father remarry? No, he's had three relationships, all of which have not gone great. <laughs> he lived with other women. Yeah, and they like he's he's like they come over and they like stayed they stayed the night all within like a week and stuff and I'm like that's not good. Yeah, you're right. I'm like I don't get why that happened. He's he's become a different person since he uh, divorced like three years ago. So both of your parents are messed up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, are you able to go live with him and? And be homeschool, maybe join another homeschool um, or something. Not the not the homeschooling thing, but I've been told that that might actually be the case where I'm over at his house more when school starts. So that could be good. I don't know. How you feel about? So would you like to live with him? I I, I would actually to see how it would go because I think there could be some benefits. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. And if you do live with him, let him know he needs to be a good example for you. Tell him to be stop being weak and be a good example. You need a father. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And as far as your political views and things like that, don't ever or or right or wrong, don't ever ever try to convince anyone of anything. You know, when the opportunity comes for you to speak your mind, you speak, if they ask and, uh, and you do have an opinion, you speak what, the way you see things, but don't try to make anyone accept it as right or wrong or yeah. period, because it will frustrate you. To... What so are you saying? It, it will frustrate you, and we don't have a right to make anyone believe anything. They have a right to suffer and die. 
as, as horrible as that may sound, yeah. And when I say die, I mean that they have a right to suffer. And then in, in that father state, they are dying anyway. They're not living. I don't mean like physically die, but they're dying because when you're in a father state, you're not living. You're dying. That's why yeah, life. Like their morality is gone. R- right. That's why life is such hell. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And so when you do, if they ask you about it or a conversation comes up with them, and you give your opinion, they don't like it, and just say, okay, fine, we don't have to talk about it. But don't try, not one iota, to force anyone to believe anything. Yeah, it's it's really sad, too, because my entire family have been brainwashed into thinking that— they, they've been brainwashed to white guilt, basically. They're being controlled by these opinions. It's yes. ridiculous. Yes. And it's sad that I have to see them living this lie— and see them go, you know, just blindly go along with it because that's what they've been told. Right. Even though they clearly don't even know it. They clearly, when I ask them these things, they can't give me any clear examples of racism. They don't even see it in their own lives. Um, but then they say that it's a systemic problem. They're just repeating. They're afraid to be honest with themselves. But forgive them. Don't resent them. But don't try to force it. Don't get mad. Don't get frustrated. Let them believe what they want because they have to live their lives however way. You know, they're in a fallen state. They want to stay there. Let them stay. But don't you believe into their lives either. And if you don't get angry at them, you will not believe into their lives. And you won't become like them. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to, to follow, your obviously, your advice and stuff and it's been working out pretty well for me. Good. You know, I've noticed that in, in most of the families I've dealt with, at least, there, there's always one or two of the children, whether it's the, the male child or the female child, that's been set apart from the family by God. And, like, God is protecting them from falling into that. And so you sound like one of the young men that are fortunate enough by God that you are not, you're in the family, but you're not uh, of the family. You are a son of God, and you're holding on to that. And I want you to hold on to that by not being mad. Don't feel sorry for them because we don't have a right to feel sorry for anyone. It's, you know, we're, we're no different in that we're all humans. So don't feel sorry for them. Be honest, but don't feel sorry. Don't get angry. Don't get frustrated, and you're going to have an amazing life, buddy. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to it. And don't have sex before marriage. Don't live with women. Don't do it the way that, because you can see that it's not working for your parents. Likewise, it won't work for you. You do it the right way, and you'll be fine. Yeah, I, I, I definitely see that. I definitely believe it. Yeah. So don't get angry at them. Don't get frustrated. Just be honest, but don't be mad. Um, I suggest you talk to your father, let him know you need to live with him, and, and you'll see what's the best thing to do, and do the best thing, and uh, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Don't let anything in life be that important that it'll make you angry. Yeah, because anger, obviously, I've seen this anger, literally, if everybody in a situation is angry, so if you have three people that are arguing, if everyone's angry, it just goes on. Yes. Nothing gets resolved. That's right. Nothing in life is so important that you have to force it. If it's not happening easily, if it's not just being happening, let it go. Don't let it be that important to you that you try to force it. Yeah. That makes sense? Definitely, yeah. So don't try to make them believe. Um, Don't get angry. Angry, talk to your father and let him know you really need him to be right because you need your father now. And hopefully that'll work out. If it doesn't, let me know. Call me back. Yeah, I'll, I'll try. Well, you can call me back anyway, but call me back. You don't sound like you have Asbury. You sound smart to me and wise. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I. I, I <laughs> <laughs> I do have Asperger's, though. I don't think that's a direct, uh, like, opposite. What do you like doing? What do you like building, or what do you like doing? 
I like uh, ma- well, mainly I like playing uh, playing video games. Well, so then you should become the creator of video games. Yeah, I I, I used to have uh, I used to my hobby used to be writing, but I kind of I kind of drifted away from that because I I would always write stories and they would become nothing. You you don't like it anymore? Not really, not much. Oh, okay. Well, don't be like those old guys who are into video games and they sit around all day just playing video games. You, since you like it, then you start creating video games and put them out there and sell them, make money. Yeah, I I definitely don't want to. I don't. I definitely don't want to be one of those like, you know, those people you see now, those modern like gamers and stuff that just play games and do nothing else. Right. They're just becoming bombs. Yeah, I mean, definitely, yeah, it's not good. Well, Michael, for 13 years old, you are very, very smart, man. You made my day. I know that the um, the uh, video games, I have a report. I may not get to it today, but they're saying that the UN, uh, which is the World Health Organization or something, that they are saying video gamers uh, is a disease now. They're calling video gamers a disease, according to the UN World Health Organization. So everything that you be, <laughs> everything that you become addicted to, they're calling it a disease rather than something that you can overcome. Yeah. So they're calling the gamers dis uh, a disorder. I definitely think they I definitely think that they're lost. Obviously. Yeah. I don't think that it's like a disease. That's right. They're in a fallen state. They have messed up parents. The boys and girls, men and women are looking for love of a father. And, and instead of forgiving and returning to the father, they become addicted to other things. Yeah, they become betas. Beta! Beta! <laughs> well, Michael, my, my, call me again, man. I enjoy talking to you. Yeah, likewise. Let me know what happens when you talk to your father and let him know you want to live with him and make sure it's okay and and tell him you need him to be a man, to be a father, to love what's right and set an example for you. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Your brothers need the same thing. That's why they're smoking pot. They're looking for the love of a father. Something is missing. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention as well. They uh, they smoke pot and they're not getting anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> they're not successful. They're not. And then my, the hilarious thing is one of them turns around and goes, why am I not successful? Because <laughs> like, you're smoking pot. You're spending all your money on pot. How old are they? Uh, 23 and 25. And you're 13. So your parents have three boys? Um, No, my 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 mom had two kids with a different d- different guy. He was another one of those uh at, he was, like, really abusive and stuff. I didn't know him, though. So your mother already had kids before she married your father? Yeah, with a, with a different guy who was really, uh, he was the worst one. He was really abusive. Who told you that? To my kids. Not my kids. My kids. <laughs> my brothers. Who told you that? Uh, well, my brothers, actually, they saw this happen a lot. And I saw it, um... Is it easy? For, is it easy for men to deal with your mother? What is it easy for men to deal with your mother? Um. Yeah, I think I think they're just terrible men in some cases. <laughs> that, they're just terrible people. All right. Well, let me know. Uh, as well. I have totally enjoyed talking to you. I'm on the. I gotta go because I got other calls. I'm running out of time. But will you call me back? Okay. What was that last one? What was that last part? Will you call me again? Uh, yeah, I'll try. Are you doing my silent prayer? Uh, no, I don't. I don't know much about you know prayer and everything. I'm I'm gradually getting more into that and learn not learning, but like you know trying to get to know God more with, and more. With, so I will try that. Believe me, God is with you. You would be able to see things as clearly as you do if it wasn't for God allowing you to see it. But I want you to check out my silentprayer.video and let me know what you think about it. Yeah, what is the silent prayer? Silentprayer.video. It shows you how to 
sit quietly and allow God to just take over your life and guide you through life. It's, okay, I'll definitely check that out. Yeah, it shows you how it causes you to separate from those thoughts, which are not your own. They are, All those thoughts are from Satan. So he shows you how to... Oh, which thoughts? You know how we have thoughts about different things? But, yeah. I, you know, you're young. Don't worry about that right now. Just let me know what you think about the silent prayer. Once you hear silentprayer.video, it's on my YouTube, on my YouTube channel. Okay, cool. Silentprayer.video. Michael, call me again, man. I've enjoyed talking to you. You're a good guy. Yeah. Oh, one last thing. It's uh, it's, it's Micah. Oh, Micah. M I C H A. Yeah. Right on. Thank you, man. Yeah, I enjoyed talking to you. Me too. I appreciate you calling me. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll try to call you back in the next, like, coming week or so. Okay. Have a good one. You too. All right, buddy. Amazing. Believe me, it's not me that causes him to see. God is with him. And I've noticed that happening in certain families. Even when they go through a rough time as young adults, it's still something with them. God is with them to let them know, I, you know what, you'll be fine. I know it's rough, but... Your parents failed you. But let your brothers and sisters go to hell in a handbasket. I got you. I've seen it, folks, over and over. And all races, too. It's just, and, and even the Bible thumping kids, you know, they thump the Bible like their mamas and stuff. And, and, and the other kids can't thump the Bible. And God, like, don't worry. You don't need to thump it. It's in your heart. I got you. <laughs> Amazing. I love that. In the world, but not of it. Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, and share the Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show, folks. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it.